Um, so this is the evolutionary explanation of why we end up with our partners or find certain people attractive. And you need to be aware of the relationship between sexual selection and human reproductive behaviour. So how sexual selection has led to differences between male and female reproductive behaviour and their preferences in who they end up mating with. So we have sexual selection. So that's the idea that characteristics that have led to reproductive success will be passed on to future generations. So those characteristics have evolved over time. So anything that is deemed attractive to members of the opposite sex will be passed on to future generations and offspring. And those characteristics will become more exaggerated throughout the gene pool as time goes on. Now, there's two main types. You have intra and inter. So intrasexual selection is where members of the same sex, which are typically males, will compete with one another in order to be able to mate and reproduce with members of the opposite sex, so typically females. So anything that has allowed that male to be successful in that competition, to win that competition, will be able to mate and reproduce and pass those traits or qualities onto their offspring. So for example, if a male is more aggressive and he wins the fight, that, gener that trait, that characteristic will be passed on. If he is stronger, that trait will be passed on. So the idea is that males might become more aggressive and stronger as time progresses. Now inter sexual selection, is where members of the same sex involve, evolve preferences for certain qualities in a mate in the opposite sex. So as females invest more time in offspring, it's the idea that she will be more choosy. So intersexual is the idea that typically females are the ones that are being the choosier of the two um, sexes and these characteristics, again, will be passed on to future generations because they have allowed individuals to mate and reproduce and pass on those genes. So mating preferences. Now, this idea comes from men and women have evolved different mating preferences and different um, things that they find attractive in members of the opposite sex because there are differences in their sex cells. Now females, their egg cells are rarer, um, they only have a finite amount of them, and they are only able to reproduce as, um, at certain times of the year, so only at certain times they are fertile. Equally, they are only able to reproduce up to a certain age, so if you think that women go through the menopause, and that at that point they will stop being able to reproduce. Whereas men, don't necessarily have that concern. Sperm cells are, are they are able to reproduce them, create them, they are not um, finite. Therefore, this has led to the idea that females will be the choosier of the two sexes. So this has led to differences in what they want in a partner. So females are more attracted to males who will be able to invest resources into her offspring and into her. So if you think about women don't have the same amount of reproductive potential as men. So therefore, when she does reproduce, she wants to make sure that that offspring is going to be able to survive and have all the resources it needs for it in order for it to grow up and be able to pass on their genes in the future. Equally, they would want a man that can protect them and their offspring. So the idea of they want a man with the wider shoulders and a narrower hip. So showing that they are stronger, able to protect them against any danger. Equally, they would want a man that shows good parenting skills in order for them to be able to invest that time into that child and that offspring. Whereas men are more concerned about the fertility of a woman. So are they, are they going to be able to... Um, mate with a woman and is she going to be able to fall pregnant and um, carry that child to full term and be able to give birth to it. So 
think the waist to hip ratio of 0.7 is showing that she has good childbearing hips. She is able to carry a child. Large eyes and large lips are indication of youthfulness. So she has um, she is able she hasn't gone through the menopause. She is able to reproduce. Um, equally, they are quite more concerned about the weight of a female. So the idea of they they don't want a female that is too thin because um, periods may stop if uh, the weight drops below a certain point equally if a woman becomes too overweight or obese then that can affect her fertility as well so moving on to our AO3R evaluation so there's some research support from Buster's research and he found that females valued resources in males so supporting the idea that women want men that can provide resources for them but whereas men put more emphasis on the physical attractiveness of the female, so signs of fertility. So that supports the idea of um, evolutionary theory. Equally, you have research support from Clark and Hatfield. So this was the um, study of I've noticed you around campus. Will you sleep with me tonight? So men approached women and 0% of women agreed to that request, whereas 75% of males did agree to that sexual request from a female. So the idea is that supporting the idea that females would be the choosier of the sexes because they have a limited amount of reproduction um, or chances to be reproductive and would seek a quality mate, whereas um, men would, don't have that concern. However, it ignores any social or changes in cultural norms. So it's now found that women look for men who are more family orientated than necessarily the ability to provide m money and resources and the protection. It isn't very useful in being able to explain homosexual relationships. So evolutionary explanations and theories focuses on the idea of reproductive success and that, that wanting to pass on your genes to future generations. Now, homosexual relationships can't have that reproductive value. So therefore, that's a major problem for evolutionary theory and it can, can't explain um, this type of attractiveness or why homosexual couples end up together. Equally, we have issues with testability. So Buss's research in that supporting evidence lacks validity. It simply reflects the preferences of who we would find attractive, not necessarily who we would end up with, with in everyday life. So therefore it lacks ecological validity. So if we were to look at some 16 markers that you might encounter then, you might have discussed evolutionary explanations for partner preference or discussed the relationship between sexual selection and human reproductive behaviour. So in these, you'd have your two AO1 paragraphs about um, natural selection and sexual selection. So the idea that natural selection is that genes that allow reproductive success or have a reproductive advantage will increase and be passed on to future generations. And we have two types of sexual selections. Intrasexual selection, which is members of one sex, typically males compete for access to the other sex, um, typically females, leading to male-female dimorphism or the idea that there's going to be certain differences in males that will be successful in that competition, will be stronger, more aggressive, etc. And then we're going to have intersexual selection. So the idea that females will choose between um, um, members of the opposite sex. And those that are seen as attractive and those that have are able to reproduce will pass those genes on to future generations. OK, so that idea that. Um, women will prefer men that will look like they can protect them and their offspring and be able to provide resources. Then you would go through about three evaluation points, remembering to point evidence explain link. You can include your counterpoint, so the idea that buses research, we have supporting evidence, but then the, the counterpoint that we could use in that evaluation point would be the idea that actually it doesn't reflect real life. It was simply asking people about mate preferences, not who we actually end up with. Equally, we can talk about the idea that it, it can't explain homosexual relationships. It's only able to explain heterosexual relationships. 
um, because it's based on reproductive value and we can talk about the idea that over time, so it might lack temporal validity, um, social and cultural factors have changed. Women now look for men that are um, family orientated rather than um, men that have resources or look like they are able to protect them.